In this video we're going to look at uh, the expected value operator and then the use of the expected value operator to find the mean, variance, and standard deviation and then also how to calculate those values for discrete random variables. Alright, so let's look at the expected value operator first. Here we're assuming x is a random variable and the expected value operator will define as the as e, the function e, with x as the random variable that's in that function and that's what we'll call the expected value. It has certain properties. It's a linear function and so we can show that it has these these following properties. k is a scalar scalar value in this case and y is some other random variable. So if we have k times x, the expected value of that we'll just we can bring out the the k value and just have that be equal to k times the expected value of x. If we add some constant to our expected value, or sorry, our random variable x, then that'll just be the expected value of x plus k. And also if we have two random variables, x and y, and we add them together, the expected value of those two will be equal to the expected value of x plus the, the expected value of y. Now the expected value operator is sometimes referred to as the mean of a random variable and so I'll use those interchangeably mean or expected value and we'll use mu with a subscript with the random variable in there mu sub x in this case as the expected value of x. Now let's look at the variance of a random variable. The variance is a measure of the spread or dispersion of a random variable around its mean. So we're going to look at how how spread out is this random variable x and we'll call that the variance. How much does it vary from its mean? And so the def definition is the variance of x we'll use the Greek letter sigma and in this case with a subscript x for our random variable. So sigma sub x squared is our variance and that'll be equal to the expected value of the quantity x minus its mean squared. All right, so that's one definition, and from that definition we can come up with a different version of that that um, variance. So let's first we have our the definition again, and we're going to multiply this square out. Oops, I see an error. Should be a parenthesis on the inside here, uh, not not mu squared, but x minus mu squared. So this one is correct. So if we square that that um, that factor we have x squared minus 2 times x times mu plus mu squared I'm just squaring that that factor now since we saw the other properties our expected value operator is a linear operator we can find the expected value we can take the expected value of each of these items inside here so we'll have the expected value of x squared minus now mu is a constant or a scalar scalar value and so we can pull the 2 and the mu out and so we have 2 mu times the expected value of x plus we pulled out this constant mu squared. Now remember the expected value of x is equal to mu and so we can replace this one with mu and so this will become a minus 2 mu squared. This term here in the middle will become minus 2 mu squared and so we'll have the expected value of x squared minus 2 mu squared plus mu squared and therefore when we add those together we'll have 1 negative mu squared and so sigma squared or sigma sub x squared will be equal to the expected value of x squared minus mu squared. Alright so this is the one that we'll probably use most of the time since it's, a, it's actually a little easier to calculate when we talk about it talk about calculating it. Now the standard deviation is just defined in this case as sigma sub x and it's the square root of the variance or the square root of sigma sub x squared. Now how do we calculate these values for our expected value? Well we've already done the mean before so the mean we know is just the expected or the values of our experiment times their probabilities. And remember for discrete random variables these are just probabilities. 
And so we're just summing up the x values, the, the values that our discrete random variable can take, times their distribution function values. Now notice that whatever we have inside this parenthesis, we put in front of this distribution function. So we have an x there. Okay, so let's look at the variance. How do we calculate the variance? Remember we had two equations, so there's actually two ways that we can calculate this. The, this is the first way. We have the expected value of x minus mu squared. And so whatever we have in here, we can substitute over here. And so notice it looks very similar to the, the above equation, but now we've got an x minus mu squared in here. And in this case, we're going to use all of the x values from our random variable. So it's x sub i minus mu quantity squared times the dist distribution function. Now we're going to sum all those up over however many values we have for our random variable. All right, now there's, so we could do that, but notice that for each time that we do this calculation, this sum, we've got to subtract the mean from every one of those. That can kind of get kind of, get kind of tiring. So we can use this second equation. Now the second equation we had sigma sub x squared is the expected value of x squared minus mu squared. The, so the way we would do this is to calculate the expected value of x squared first and then subtract from it mu, x, mu sub x squared or mu squared. All right, so how do we calculate the expected value of x squared? Well, like I said, we have an x squared here. So we're going to have this x sub i squared in our summation. And so we'll sum our x sub i squared times our distribution function values. Sum all those up, that'll give us the expected value of x squared. Now, one common error that people make is to think, okay, I'm going to calculate the variance, so I'll calculate this first, and then they forget to go back and subtract mu squared. So don't forget that mu squared. It's very easy to forget because um, you think you're at the end because you've calculated that x, expected value of x squared. All right, let's look at an example. In this example, this is kind of a long example, um, but we're going to throw a die or throw two dice and the random variable will say is the positive difference of the two numbers. So we're going to we throw the dice, we see what the two numbers are, we subtract them so that we get a positive value and then that'll be the result. So what we'll do is we'll find the probability distribution for this random variable, then we'll calculate the mean, the variance, and the standard deviation. All right, so here I've got the two rolls. I got a table where I show the two rolls, roll 1 and roll 2 or I guess die one and die two. We know that each one of these has a probability of 1 36th of occurring, but the random variable is the difference of the two. So I've wrote the difference of the two in the table. So if I have a one and a one, if I subtract those, I get a zero. If I have a one and a two, if I subtract them, I either get a minus one or a one. And so I'm gonna take the positive value and put a one in there and so on. One and three, I put in a two, and you can, so you can see the whole table. The largest number I can have is a five. So our range for the random variable is zero, one, two, three, four, five. So now let's find the probabilities of each of those, and those will be our distribution function values. So the probability of zero is we count up all the zero values. In this case, this diagonal, there's six of them, and so we divide by the total number 36 and that's the probability. Now I wrote it in terms of eighteenths because I, all of them will end up, uh, I can factor into eighteen so I write them in terms of eighteenths. So three eighteenths. The probability of x equals one, I've got all of these ones on the on the top diagonal here and all of these ones on this diagonal down here. There's actually ten of them so ten thirty-six or five eighteenths. Alright so you can see the rest of them four eighteenths, three eighteenths, two eighteenths, and one eighteenths. So again, I, I drew a little plot so we can kind of see what it looks like. I put a zero, you know, the range values, zero through five, and then I put the lines going up to the height that we have for each of those ver those values. So three eighteenths, then five, four, three, two, one eighteenths. All right, so there's our distribution function. 
Now we need to use that distribution function to calculate the mean, the variance, and the standard deviation. All right, the mean, we already know how to do it. We take our, our value of x times the distribution value and then sum them all up. So we had 0, we had 3 18ths at 0, we had 5 18ths at 1, we had 4 18ths at 2, and so on. All right, so we multiply all this together and sum them up, we get 35 18ths. That ends up being about 1.94. Now let's do the variance. I'm going to do the variance both ways and we'll see the difference. So the variance we know is the sum of our x sub i value minus mu square that and multiply times the distribution value. So let's do that for each one of these. So our first x value is 0. 0 minus 3, 35 eighteenths. Square that and then multiply times the distribution value 3 eighteenths. The next one is 1. So 1 minus 3, 35 eighteenths. Square that times its distribution value which was 5 eighteenths. Alright, so you can see how you do this. You just keep on going. 2 minus 35 18 squared times its value all the way to the end. And if you sum all those up, you get 665 over 324. Okay, so that's one way of doing that. That's the answer for the variance. Now let's do the second method. In this method, we're going to do the expected value of x squared, and then we're going to subtract the mean squared. We already have the mean. So we've got that value. We just need to calculate the expected value of x squared. The expected value of x squared is our square is our x values squared times their distribution values. All right, so we start at 0. 0 squared times 3 eighteenths plus 1 squared times 5 eighteenths, 2 squared times 4 eighteenths, and so on, all the way down the line. And we add all those up. We get 35, 6. All right, remember, this is not where we stop. We need to go back and subtract that mu squared. So we have our variance is equal to that value of our expected value of x squared minus the mean squared. And here's another common mistake is don't forget that square. Don't forget to square that mean value. So we've got that 35 6 minus 35 18 squared. And sure enough, we get 665 over 324. A good way to check, or one thing that you can use to check, is this value should not be negative. So if you end up with a negative value here, you've done something wrong. Go back and, and find out what you did wrong. Now the standard deviation is just the square root of variance. So we take the square root of that 665 over 324, and that ends up being... 1.43. And so there, that's the end of the problem. All right, let's do one more example. <clears throat> Suppose we roll a die and keep rolling until a 5 or a 6 occurs. And we're going to stop after 4 rolls. Uh, this is the one that we've seen before. So the outcome will be the number of rolls. We're going to find the mean, the variance, and the standard deviation of that random variable. All right, so I've got the range values 1, 2, 3, 4, and I'm just going to write down the values that we found for the distribution already. 1 third, 2 ninths, 4 27ths, and 8 27ths. Okay, the mean, we're going to just sum up the x values times their distributions. So it's 1 times 1 third, 2, which is here, times 2 ninths, and so on we end up getting 65 27 or 2.407, about 2.407. Now, from now on, I'm, I'm going to use the easier method, which, well, I think is the easier method of finding the variance, and that'll be the expected value of x squared minus mu squared. Okay, so we have our expected value of x squared. We square, take the square of each of our values, times their distribution values, and sum them up, 129 over 27, and then Finally, we have to subtract from that value our mean squared, and we'll get 109, 1094 over 27, or sorry, 729. And then finally, the variance will just be the square root of that number.